Okay, good. <laughs> I, I'm a graduate, a proud graduate of the prestigious University of the District of Columbia class of 2005 out of the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm also of legacy. My mommy graduated from Washington Technical Institute in 1973. And we have a niece. I have a niece who's matriculating at the community college. So this firebird red and gold is so a, a part of uh, my life. Um, as a child, I remember homecoming on Connecticut Avenue uh, with Washington Technical Institute. And I can't tell you to see that that red and gold up and down Connecticut Avenue. It was it was a, a sight to see. And I'm looking forward to that kind of pride returning. Um, wanted to quickly, because uh, you have a lot of information that's coming to you tonight to prepare for your big day. Um, once you cross that stage, you are alumni. And I'm so happy to share with you that we do have the UDC National Alumni Society. That is our official alumni entity recognized by the Board of Trustees. The UDC National Alumni Society was established in 2002. We worked together, UDC NAS and the Office of Alumni Affairs to create meaningful engagement to support the Board of Trustees and President Mason to support the mission, the goals, the, the strategic plan of Firebird Nation. I'm hoping that you know once you graduate, you will continue to be involved that you will continue to engage Firebird Nation. We have a number of committees that you can join. And I would I would really appreciate um, engagement with the class of 2022. Maybe there are some, some new um, initiatives that we can explore together. I can tell you right now, we are looking to hopefully get started on a UDC documentary. And I need your stories. We will this summer undertake the UDC or history project, and I need your stories. So please, I'm going to put my contact information in the chat. I'm going to put the link to UDC National Alumni Society in the chat because you have an opportunity to join the Alumni Society. All graduates will receive a one year free membership, the regular membership, which is $50 per year. We have two membership levels. It's the $50 one that you pay every year. And then there's a lifetime one. You pay a one-time fee of $250 and you are a lifetime member of UDC National Alumni Society. But our president, Bernard Marion Grayson Jr., the president is extending to the class of 2022 a 20% discount so you can get the lifetime membership for a one-time fee of $200, but that expires on May 13. So I'll put that information in the chat again. You have to fill out the membership application to claim your free one-year membership. And I am asking that you just please, it's free to you one year, take advantage of it, get to know us, get engaged on, an, on a committee, See if you want to hang out with us. We would love to have you. We really need your fresh perspective as a student to let us know how can alumni help you? Was it what is it that we're not doing? What can we do? Um, what can we do better? I'm really keen to hear that story. So again, congratulations, class of 2022. Cheers to you. I can't wait to see you on May 14. Thank you, Ms. Palmer. Appreciate it. Um, Tarshay, we'll get to your question a little later. Um, we'll, we'll try to figure that out. Okay, I'm going to turn it over now to Mr. Derek Jordan. Hello, Firebirds. Congratulations for getting to this point. I know a lot of you are excited about the great things that will be happening in the upcoming week and so. And uh, I know you guys are all ready to jump, walk, slide, get across that stage and um, really uh, enjoy the opportunity um, that are coming in front of you from all of the hard work that you've been through. But before you get too far out there, I just wanted to alert you to a couple things that 
will be great for you to accomplish prior to graduation because it helps out the students behind you. Keep in mind, you have that first destination survey that all of you I know have received a number of emails from me, from the system, from Dr. Moffitt, and maybe even your um, employment counselors here from the Office of Career Services. But keep in mind that first destination survey needs to be completed. That is one of the uh, points where uh, the federal government can see a re uh, return on their investment. So yes, students, that lower cost and tuition that you receive and all of that comes from the federal government and uh, the ability to go to a federal university. And with that, we need to let them know all of the great things our Firebirds are doing upon graduation. Many of you are leaving already with magnificent job opportunities set up. Some of you are still looking. Some of you are in transition. I know a couple of you that I can see your names on this call. You waited until now to start looking for a job, which you said you had to focus on your studies and I respect. But nevertheless, you still have to uh, take that opportunity to look for what your next steps are after graduation. And with that, I need you guys to sit down one and complete the first destination survey. It's within the Handshake system. Yes, all of you have access to Handshake. If you don't have access to Handshake, please feel free uh, to contact me. I put my information uh, in the chat. Uh, my email and telephone number, please reach out. I will be more than happy to assist you with completing this process. This also will give you a chance to even talk about the internships that you were able to accomplish while you were in your majors. And if you even had some um, words to give back to the university on your way out, there's also a section for you to give your feedback. But at the end of the day, I want you guys to understand that completing the first destination survey allows the federal government to see where their uh, investment into the UDC family is going. And it also puts you in a position to help out the students behind you to make sure that we're, they're receiving a lower cost for tuition. So it's a win-win across the board. And I think it's a great thing that uh, I'm here to assist you with this process. We also have our employment counselors to assist you as well. But don't feel uh, that you have to ask any questions or um, stand in front of everyone and tell me your situation at this moment because this is not the, um, the, the time for it. But yet, if you reach out in an email or telephone, I will be more than happy to sit down, speak with you in reference to the survey. I will also work with you for all the hot button employment opportunities that we have available. We have over 5,000 jobs in the handshake system. Some of you will say, well, I haven't seen what I wanted. Well, maybe you need to sit down with me to make sure that you're looking properly, that we can make sure that we can put you in a prime position to move forward. So please take the opportunity to complete your first destination survey. And I will also leave it with this. If you are a nursing major, and I see three on here, but if you are, uh, and I know there are more, but if you're a nursing major and you have secured your position for, uh, after graduation, please reach out to my office. I have a great opportunity for you uh, in reference to that. So if you are a nursing major and you have received an employment opportunity for after graduation, please, there's a great opportunity for you uh, with the Firebirds family. So would you please give me an email, uh, send me an email or reach out to me via phone at the chat. Again, first destination survey is something you need to complete upon graduation. If you have any questions, comments, frustrations, not able to complete it, can't figure out where it is, can't log on, any of those things and anything else that I have not mentioned in reference to employment and internships, please contact Mr. Derek Jordan at Derek.Jordan1 at UDC.edu. My telephone number is 202-274-6184. And I, again, I want to congratulate you guys for getting this far. We are so proud of you from uh, administrative level back to the students. So please keep flying Firebirds. Thank you. Thank you so much, Derek. 
Um, I also see on the line, I just want to make sure that they know that their presence is here and we're happy that they're here. But I see members from the registrar's office who is our bread and butter for this commencement. I mean, I don't know if you all know this, but they produce your degrees. They make sure that you all have cleared your classes and grades. So I do see Miss Nakia Pugh and Miss Caroline O'Yu on the call. Um, so just wanted to say hi and give them a shout out and thank you for joining us. Um, next, I am going to share my screen because I do want to go over verbally um, the communication you received from our chief academic officer, Dr. Lawrence Potter, regarding our COVID-19 protocols for commencement. Um, it is very important that every graduate read over this letter in its entirety to make sure that they are clear um, about the expectations for Saturday, May 14th. Um, so you all should have received this today, and then I also sent a copy of it yesterday directly to graduates, um, just in the event that this was overlooked in your inbox. Um, so I'm just going to read it as is, and I'll clarify some, um, some of the bullet points as needed. And if you have questions, again, please put them in the chat. We will allow time for questions at the end of um, our conversations. So we are excited to once again have the opportunity to host a commencement ceremony to celebrate all University of the District of Columbia graduates. The following, the following safety precautions are in place to protect our graduates, faculty, staff, volunteers, and guests. All commencement participants, including children three years of age and older, must be fully vaccinated. One shot from Johnson & Johnson, two shots from Pfizer or Moderna, and wear masks. KN95 masks, N95, KF94 are strongly encouraged. We will provide KN95 masks for UDC graduates, faculty, and staff and volunteers um, participating in commencement. Graduates or guests exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19 should not attend commencement. Commencement will be live streamed on our commencement website, just as a FYI for our family and friends who did not get a chance to make it in person. Um, the following additional requirements for UDC graduates and guests attending commencement ceremonies on Saturday, May 14th. These measures are subject to change. The university will follow all current COVID-19 health and safety guidelines. Doors to commencement hall will open at 9 a.m. one hour before and close at 9.45 a.m. once the processional begins. Doors will reopen after the processional is complete. So this is for your guests. Your guests need to be um, at the convention center by nine o'clock to get into the doors and the doors will close at 945. Graduates who are, who are clear to participate will only receive four general admission tickets. Students, faculty, and staff participating in commencement must wear regalia. Those are your caps and gowns. The ceremony will also be available live stream on the commencement website for all our family and friends who cannot attend. So next, he highlights requirements for our UDC graduates participating in commencement. So this is only for the graduates. Face masks are required. All clear graduates, including online student program students, must have proof of vaccination on file via the student health portal if they plan to attend in-person graduation. UDC graduates who do not have proof of vaccination will have the option to be tested on site at the Washington Convention Center. On-site testing will be provided for UDC students and employees only. UDC students and employees only, so no guests. Guests are not to be, will not be tested on-site at the convention center. Testing will open from 8 o'clock to 9.30 a.m. to ensure rapid test results can be read before the 10 a.m. ceremony. UDC students and employees will, uh, with approved vaccination exemptions, religious or medical, must be tested on-site at the Washington Convention Center. Testing will open from 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. to ensure rapid test results can be read before the 10 o'clock ceremony. Um, UDC graduates name announcement and stage crossing. Graduates must be masked and will cross an ADA compliant ramp as their name is announced. Graduates will pause at the marked spot on stage for a formal photo with the president. No handshakes this year, but you may fist butt with President Mason. And graduates must keep their mask on the entire time they move across the stage. So now the next sec section is for your guests attending UDC commencement. Face masks must be worn for all guests three years of age and older. 
Tickets are required for admittance to commencement hall. Guests must have their tickets. Children three and older will require a ticket. An adult must accompany children at all times. All guests 12, age 12 and older must be fully vaccinated prior to attending commencement. Guests must have proof of vaccination via a digital copy of the vaccination or vaccine card. If there is no proof of vaccination, guests must show proof of a negative COVID-19 PCR test taken within 72 hours of the ceremony, so that would be Wednesday, May 11th. Guests with medical or religious exemption must also show proof of a negative COVID-19 PCR test taken within 72 hours of the ceremony, which is Wednesday, May 11th. Unvaccinated guests with medical conditions are encouraged to view commencement online via the commencement website. Hosting successful in-person commencement ceremonies will depend on everyone doing their part and remaining diligent in, in following our guidelines. We are obligated to abide by the District of Columbia, the DC Department of Health, and the CDC health and public safety regulations as necessary to ensure the safety and security of your constituents. So I can't stress this enough for your guests. Guests will not be receiving rapid tests on site. They must show up already with their proof, with their proof of vaccination, I'm assuming with their proof of negative test results or a vaccination card. And they have to do that within 72 hours of the ceremony. So I do encourage you all to reread, read again, read it again for clarification. I can't stress this enough, but read it again to ensure that you are following the proper procedure to um, be allowed admittance for commencement next week on Saturday. There are requirements for graduates, there are requirements for faculty and staff, and there are requirements for your guests. So make sure you don't confuse the two with, with another requirement for another person, okay? So, yeah, okay. And then, so that is, those are our COVID-19 guidelines. Again, this is in your email um, from me and also from um, the office of the chief academic officer. All right, so regalia, I've been getting a number of emails and so is our lovely bookstore manager, Jennifer, has been receiving emails asking, where is your regalia? So we are, the, it is coming. It is coming from Herb Jones. Herb Jones is our servicer and provider for our regalia class ring and class ring needs. Um, as you know, we are undergoing a supply chain issue across the world. So it's actually impacting us as well. We're not the only school that is impacting, but they are mindful of our commencement date and have assured us that all commencement materials will be delivered to the addresses that you all use when you ordered your regalia. So they will not be coming to the school, okay? They will be coming to whatever address you put on file when you made your purchase of your regalia from the Herb Jones website. It will get there in time for commencement. If anything changes, of course, myself and Jennifer will update you all sufficiently and as quickly as we can as soon as we get more information from Herf Jones. Um, I also want to note there were a number of graduates who um, did not purchase the regalia by the deadline. Um, so the bookstore will be selling about 50 caps and gowns this Friday at the bookstore. Now, mind you, this, these are for students who have not placed any orders. This is not for students who have placed their orders and want to get extra regalia just in case. Do not do that. We only have a limited supply and they need to go to people who did not meet the deadline to purchase the regalia online. Please note that um, you will not be receiving your hood or stole with this set of regalia. It's just going to be your cap and gown. Um, your hood is specific to your um, degree and your major. And so we do not have everybody's degree and major hoods on hand. It had to be custom. You know, it was, it was a custom order. That's why we asked you all to order on the, on the website. So you will just be receiving your cap and gown, but they will be available for purchase on Friday at the UDC bookstore. Okay. And those are only for students who have not ordered regalia from Herb Jones. So students, if you know you place an order and you just waiting for it, please just wait a little longer. We do not have the supply like that for you all to be rushing and ordering stuff just in case. Okay, uh, what else? Something else. It'll come back to me. Okay, so it's 530. I'm actually gonna go to the chat and start at, um, answering some questions. And if the other comment that I had comes to mind, I will bring it up.
Oh, grand finale. I wanted to bring that up. Thank you. I just remembered. Um, grand finale is next week. So a number of you have also asked, what does grand finale entail? I do want to implore you all to look at your graduating class website and your emails because that information is also in there. But um, as you can see from our call, we will have members of the UDC NAS. That's our National Alumni Society. They will be on hand to sign you all up for that free year, your free first year of being an alum of UDC. Well, a, a financial alum of UDC, and they will also be presenting a graduating class toast to all of our gra graduates in the ballroom. Um, student, who am I talking about? Career services will also be on hand to continue getting those first destination surveys filled out, um, helping you all fill those out. Financial aid will be on hand too, in case you also need to do your exit, your loan exit interview counseling survey. So anybody who has taken out a student loan from the, the federal government, you are expected to fill out that exit, um, that loan exit interview ap applications, just so they know that you are, are graduating and when to restart payments, or hopefully one day, hopefully they'll just cancel these payments and we don't have to worry about that, but you still got to fill out your loan exit stuff. Um, who else will be there? The registrar will be there um, also to pass out name cards. So we talked about um, walking across the stage. You're going to be given a name card. That's what you're going to give the announcer um, when um, you are on the stage so they know what name to call. So you're able to start picking those up um, on the 9th. In addition to your honors course, if you are eligible, honors comes in um, it, you only are eligible for honors if you meet a certain GPA requirement. I believe the minimum is a 3.3, but I want to ask you all to look at your course catalog to get some details about what it means to be an honors recipient. If the um, registrar does verify you as having or graduating with honors, they will give you an honors court. It's just a simple gold court. They, while they will also be at grad finale, they are also allowing students to come and pick up these materials starting the week of May 9th. So there's not a big rush on Wednesday or even on Saturday morning. So we want to try to take care of as much business as we can um, prior to May 14th. Also, um, to, to, oh, graduation ticket pickup. So a lot of you have been coming in to um, pick up your graduation tickets for tickets for announcements for envelopes that is still going on. And um, tomorrow from 3 to 6 in the student center B06, um, I may add on another day on Tuesday, uh, but I will let you all know that via email if we if we come to that decision. But you also could pick up your tickets on um, Wednesday during grad finale. We'll also have a DJ. We'll have some food. We'll have some snacks. Earl Howard pictures will be there, too, in case people still need to take their senior class pictures. Um, a number of things. So it's just your last, it's a one stop shop before commencement, but it's also your last hurrah before we get you all across that stage on Saturday, May 14th. So now I will go in and go through some of these questions. So, no, you will not have free parking for the ceremony. This is Washington, D.C. There is no free parking anywhere in this city. We even pay for parking as employees here at the university. So, but there is street parking. There is um, lot parking, which I think ranges between 15 or $20. Um, but at least you know your car is safe. Um, the convention center is also metro accessible where it, it literally takes you right into the building. So that is also an option. So please plan accordingly, but no, there is no free parking for the ceremony. Um, you do, if you miss grad finale or the rehearsal, that is fine. Well, of course, we will bring you up to speed Saturday, May 14th on how to line up and how to assemble for your procession. So that is fine. Okay, yes, and I clarified earlier that your virtual student ID is okay for my fall 21 graduates. So fall 21, you're still considered the class of 2022. We have one academic year here, which consists of the fall and spring semesters and sometimes the summer, summer, spring, summer, fall and spring semesters. So this is the 2021, 2022, but you are considered the class of 2022. You guys just got, you know, got to hit a little quicker than your spring grads or fellow comrades and graduate a little early, but you are still the class of 2022. Um, for my 20, fall 21 graduates, though, I'm going to check in with IT to see if they could put you all back in the system. For some reason, you all were taken out uh, for presence. So if you are still having issues downloading that digital ID, if you do not have a UDC ID, I will work on that this week and let you know when you can go ahead and try again to install that app. Yes, the meeting is being recorded. Thank you, um, Carissa, for reminding me to hit the record button. Okay. I see some of my comrades have already answered some questions, so thank you for that. Um, if 
if someone isn't graduating and they want to give away their tickets, that's on them. That's going to be between you all. This is a good forum to kind of fish around and see who needs what for tickets. Um, but I will not be giving you all extra tickets unless I have some type of notice that you're getting tickets for somebody or from somebody. Um, so work that out on your personal time. Um, four tickets is just to ensure the safety. So we have 726 graduates um, graduating from the University of the District of Columbia, including our law school students who, were part who will be participating in commencement this year. So if you multiply 726 times four, um, that's about a little over 2,800 students alone, uh, 2,800 people along with students and their guests. And that's not including our faculty and our staff. So we add on another maybe about 1,500 to 1,000, um, that's, that's a lot of people in one space. And we do not have the whole of the convention center. We only have one hall. So we want to ensure that there's still enough safe dis social distancing, enough space where people are not on top of each other. Um, so that is the reason why we have four tickets. This is our first in-person commencement in the middle of a pandemic still. I know things look so open outside and people are doing different things with their policies, but we want to make sure that we're not being a super spreader event and that we're being as safe as possible in order to celebrate your achievements. Okay. So guests do not upload proof of a negative test. Guests bring their proof to the convention center. Students are the only ones that should be uploading their vaccination cards into our help portal. So if you are a student who has been vaccinated and you know your card is not in that portal, that is for you to upload. But your guests, they're going to show up to the convention center with a negative test result in hand saying um, that I am neg I've tested negative in the last 72 hours. Please let me in. So there is nothing for guests to upload. So, yes, they do just need to bring their vaccination cards or a negative test result. And this, these are for our guests. Honor cords come from the registrar's office. Again, May 9th is when um, they're going to start allowing students to come pick up said honor cords um, and their name cards. And you can also get those honor cords on May 11 during grad finale. Um, the GPA varies between the degrees, I believe, for community college students. They are um, graduate with honors, and that starts at a 3.3. But again, the course catalog has all that information in there. There are separate designations for cum laude, magnum cum laude, and summa cum laude, which range from, a, I think, a 3A to a 4O is um, summa um, 3. Three, seven to, you know, and so on and so forth for Magna for Coom. So you all have to do the due diligence and look at your course catalog and find out that information. But also the registrar will verify if you have honors. So they're not just giving honors course out to everybody. I do want to make note for my graduate students that are on the call. Um, graduate students do not receive honor courts. Um, and that is simply because you have to maintain a B average in graduate school. So everybody is technically on honors. Um, but bachelor, the honors courts are reserved for our associates and our bachelor's degree students if they graduate with honors or if they graduate with one of our cum laude designations. Um, I changed my address. Okay, great, great. Thank you for that. Um, Mark Kenley said to everyone that she did change her address and contacted the registrar to deliver her degree to her new address. So if you know you've moved within the last four to five years and you have not updated anything with the with UDC, please go ahead and update that address just in case. Um, we are we will be passing out degrees after commencement. And please correct me if I'm wrong, Nakia or Caroline. Um, but in the event that you are not there or you leave early for commencement, which I'm strongly urging you not to do, um, then they may possibly be mailed. But the registrar will give us more information about how they're going to be mailed or if they're going to allow you all to pick them up if you do not receive it at commencement. The name of the app for the digital ID is, is called Digital ID by Presence, and I'll actually put that in the chat right now. And you can find it in your Google Play or Apple Store um, apps. And it's simple. You just need your UDC email address, follow the login instructions, and it's going to generate an image of a QR code, your end number, and your name. It's pulled directly from Banner. Oh, thank you, Tarshay. Appreciate it. Um, no, you do not automatically get... No, I mean, if you meet the requirements and if the registrar vests that you are indeed an honor student, they will give you the courts. Mm 
Guests just need to have a negative PCR test. However means you, you get it, whether it's a rapid test or from a provider, we just need to have something showing that it is a negative test, but it should come from someone legit like a provider. You know, you can't just write on a piece of paper, I'm negative. Um, but it, it, you know, just put it together. You have to have, a, have it on file that you did test negative. Yeah, thank you, Fo. Okay, I see. Thank you, Dr. Reed. So please pick up your degrees after commencement and before you leave the convention center. Thank you. Yes, degrees will be handed out at graduation after commencement. Um, I did touch that there is this there is um a designation between summa magna and cum laude. Um, oh, so it is just one court, it's a gold court. But your um designation is listed in the commencement program. So it will say. Derek Jr. Derek Jordan Senior Summa Cum Laude next to it if you do meet that requirement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any tick? Okay, I see a lot of tickets. Every yes, every guest has to have a negative PCR if they're not vaccinated. If they're vaccinated, they just need to bring proof of their vaccination card. If they are not vaccinated, they need to be proof that they tested negative within the last 72 hours, which is May 11th. When will the registrar send out clearances? I know they said we, they are, they are working on sending those out. Grades were due today. I believe from um, professors who had graduated seniors in their class. So as soon as all those grades are in, they will start issuing out those clearances via email. So make sure you're in your email checking for that clearance. To those of you who came into the room a little late, I talked about the regalia, our caps and gowns, they will arrive to you by commencement in time for commencement. If you uploaded your COVID vaccination to the portal before, do you need to upload it again? No, if you already, if you've done that, it's already on file. Guests need to have or, either or. So either they're vaccinated and they bring proof of vaccination or they're not vaccinated and they bring proof of a negative PCR test, okay? Yes, this is being recorded and it will be posted on the graduating class website. Um, with the rest of the videos from earlier in the semester. No, so we are only requiring the first two shots. Uh, we do not have a mandate for boosters. Those are those are still an optional shot. So if you're if you took the type of shot where it's one shot to Johnson and Johnson, then that's all we'll be looking for. But if it was Pfizer and Moderna, we know those were two um, shot trials. So um, you need to have those two shots for Moderna and Pfizer, one shot for Johnson and Johnson, but we are not checking to see if you have a booster. Thank you, Louise, for um, clearing up the cum laude designation. So it says here 3.3 .3 cum laude, um, 3.6 magna, and 3.8 summa. Graduates do not need tickets. You guys are the guests of honor. You don't need tickets to your graduation. Okay, so I didn't say that I will definitely be giving out extra tickets. We are only giving out four tickets. I did reiterate that students had to find other means to get extra tickets from their classmates not using them. Um, but again, commencement will be live streamed for viewing um, if possible. I mean, uh, viewing on our uh, commencement website. We are all still waiting on our caps and gowns. They are going to get here, I promise you. Yes, if you have a digital um, formation uh, variation of your vaccination card, then yes, you can show that. Okay, again, honor cords can be picked up at the registrar's office beginning the week of May 9th. Um, there is, a, I sent out a communication yesterday that gave the location of the registrar's office. They will also be on site at the grad finale in the student center on Wednesday, May 11th from 6 to 8 to continue to pass out those honor cords and name cards. But starting Monday, May 9th, you may go in and um, pick up your name card and your honor cord. No, there will not be food trucks on May 11, but we will have refreshments. Uh, 
Um, let's see, Dr. Reed, can you chime in on this? Um, it does not mean that you're an honor student, uh, but I think convocation is is a separate activity for students, but that it may not necessarily mean you're an honor student. You can find your honors designation if you look at your unofficial transcript too, um, by looking at your cumulative GPA. And I believe it will let you know if you are, if you made some type of honors, whether it just says honors or if it says all of those cum laude's, but convocation is a, is a separate event, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're an honor student. Um, that is correct. correct that is correct. Okay. They are not a, uh, Anyone can go to convocation if, if they're invited. So it's been designated on your GPA, uh, whether you are a uh, honors recipient or not. Thank you. And as far as your dean's list designations, those obviously come from the dean's office. So you'll have to follow up with your respective school um, in order to receive, if they're doing certificates and in order to receive that. So um, I, I didn't touch on this too often during the course of our meetings, but our university is comprised of five schools. Um, that is the College of Arts and Sciences or CAS, um, CAUSES, which is the College of Agricult um, at, oh, what about the Jackson? Agricultural, Urban Sustainability and Environmental Sciences. Uh, we also have SBPA, our School of Business and Public Administration, um, CES, which is our School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, and our lovely Community College. So you'll have to contact the res your respective dean's office um, to see if they are giving anything away for your dean's list designation. Um, so, did you have your hand up or is that from something earlier? No, I'm sorry. Let me put okay. it down. Just checking. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. And so that wraps up our question and answer period. Um, again, uh, um, follow up. I'm going to put Mr. Montgomery's name in the chat. Um, this person is asking for if we're still doing the last dollar amount of awards for graduates. Um, so contact the financial aid office and I'm going to put his information in the chat to inquire. Uh, you receive confirmation that you're graduating from the registrar. If you apply to graduate and they've been sending you letters, um, giving you your next steps, then you should be okay. But that's going to be a registrar question. So I want to ask you to follow up with them. But if you've been receiving my emails, um, if you know you apply to graduate um, either in the fall or the spring, um, then you should be okay. Um, but I, that's, I, we can't give you another confirmation until the registrar starts sending out those clearances that you are indeed graduating, that you finished up your course requirements. Okay. All right, again, please keep an eye on your emails. Um, please keep an eye on the graduating class page. I'm actually going to share that page so you all know what it looks like and what the link is, which I'm going to put in the chat. Copy. Where are we at? Where's my chat? There we go. Um, so you know what it looks like and what to look for. So you'll see here, there's a big advertisement about grand finale, Wednesday, May 11th. We're gonna start in the UDC Theater of the Arts for rehearsal. Um, the Theater of the Arts is building 46. It is it's down the street from campus. It's right next to campus. You can't miss it. Um, I'll try to put up a campus map or send you all a campus map so you see you better identify it. And then we're going to make our way over to the student center for grad finale. Um, we talked about COVID-19 protocol for commencement. Um, that letter has been sent out to you. Um, requirements for grad. Okay. Oh, all that has been placed in there. Thank you, Jay. Commencement decorum. So I can't stress this enough. Commencement starts at 10 a.m. Graduates are expected to be um, on site by 8.30 a.m., okay? We have to get you all lined up. We're going to have picture people there to take pictures. You are going to have a, a few, like, refreshments. Um, but we're, we, everybody needs to be there so we get you all ready for your processional by 10 o'clock. We start on time. 10 o'clock a.m. is when we're starting. Commencement it lasts for about three to four hours. So just budget your time and expect to stay there the entire time. We have a history of leaving commencement early when we walk across that stage and it looks so bad, especially when we're live streaming, especially when we're, you know, um, 
when we're trying to see our other comrades graduate and parents and stuff. So just make sure that you guys are there the entire time. We want to be respectful to everybody's achievements and efforts. Um, it took you all X amount of years to get this degree. You know, what is three more hours to make sure that everything is celebrated and that you all are duly inducted as alumni into um, our, our illustrious University of the District of Columbia. So please manage your time with that. If you do want to schedule anything as far as dinners, please do so after three o'clock. Okay, any parties after three o'clock, we just want to make sure that we're all there. We're visible and that we have some people to celebrate by the time commencement is officially over. Um, we start in order. Sometimes we start in order of the community college. Sometimes we'll start with cast, but either way, we want to make sure that there's a full house there for whatever college is ending our commencement ceremony. Okay. And it's just very disrespectful to leave in the middle of a ceremony that you all are celebrating and we're just trying to celebrate your accomplishments and your family members. Um, okay. So Fo does have her hand raised now. Go ahead. Yes, I have my hand up this time and quickly. Um, if I could be permitted, I, I, and I'm thinking back to 2005 when I graduated and we graduated at the, what is now called the Capital One Arena. And I'm not a person who can get anywhere on time. I'm going to make that admission. I'm late for everything. Okay. But this day was extremely important to me. Uh, my family and I, we were going back and forth about how we're going to get there. So I left, I left early and I took the train. I cannot tell you, I'm so glad I did that. On Saturday, May, May 14th, the city is going to be filled with so many visitors. I believe Ms. Jennings mentioned there's going to be a protest on May 14th. So you keep that in mind as you're making your way uh, to the convention center. You, you want to be there on time. You want to get lined up. You know, you, you don't want to be rushed. You don't want to be last minute. You don't want to be. You don't want to have the doors close on you because they are going to start start on time. And I cannot tell you in full graduation regalia. I was on that train. The and so many people were congratulating me. It was such a good time on the train. So many positive people. But please, if you're like me and you can't get any place on time, don't don't fuss with no parking. Wear your mask, have your hand sanitizer and get on the train. It goes directly to the convention center. OK. All right, good luck. Thank you Phil, for reminding me of that. But yes, there is a protest on May 14th. Um, Howard University usually graduates on the same day that we do. And there are a number of other commencement ceremonies happening that weekend. So again, just plan your time and your arrival and your guest arrivals to a T and just try to foresee every type of anything that may happen because DC is already a busy place and this is high time for busyness in the middle of a commencement season. We are one of what eight colleges in the DMV area, probably I'm, I'm probably adding some more colleges, but basically everybody is graduating within these next two weekends. So please act accordingly. Um, but I do want you all to um, read over the commencement day quorum. Um, for some more information, um, you'll also see on this website that we do have past graduating class meetings um, starting all the way from January. And you'll see here on May 4th that this video will be posted. The address and location for commencement um, is right here on the graduating class page. So again, a wealth of information, ticket pickups and schedules and what have you. And this is updated on a regular basis. Um, thank you again to the student who put in the information about um, honors um, designations, but it all it also is found in your course catalog, which is found right here on the website. Um, again, wealth of information, take some time to read over it. Um, but other than that, I think you all are pretty much set. So just be mindful, be mindful of next weekend. I know we're super excited. Let's try to get through this week, get through next week and celebrate some new graduates um, of the University of the District of Columbia. And Ms. Uh, Jennings, there are yes, a couple more questions that have come in oh. um, mm -hmm. about that. Okay, so if a family member just got their first vaccine, uh, they need to ha you need to have two. And so therefore you would need to have a negative uh, test. Uh, so they would need to get a negative test uh, that one uh, vaccine will not be will pass will not pass, so they need to have a negative test uh, to show that they are negative, uh, so that one shot will not be accepted. Uh, can you bring backpacks? Um, I don't think we have a non backpack thing, but be careful that you you don't want to leave it somewhere, and you will be bringing it in with you as a part of the protocol because you know the student uh, village will be available but i wouldn't leave any 
um, of your personal belongings in there and there will not be lunch. There will be light snacks available to you in the student village uh, during uh, while you're waiting uh, to go into the uh, hall C for the commencement. Yes, thank you, Dr. Reed. I was actually I responded to her privately, but thank oh, okay. you for but it's fine because everybody needs to know that. So you, she's absolutely right. If you have, if you've taken one shot and you haven't taken that second one, you have to come with that negative test that because you are not fully vaccinated. Um, but thank you for bringing that up. Um, I will try to get a map of the convention center, but it's really straightforward. Once you get off of the metro, you're literally in the building. You start walking with that regalia on. They're going to tell you exactly where to go. You're going to see signs. You can't miss it. But I will try to get a convention center map for you all. Um, speaking of the backpacks, um, I also make this caveat about shoes. I know a lot of our um, get a lot of our graduates want to wear very fancy high heel shoes, and that's great. But please bring an extra pair of shoes when you're in the holding area before the processional. That floor is straight concrete, and you're going to be standing on there for quite some time before you even process. So you are welcome to bring a change of shoes, but try not to bring so many items because who's carrying this stuff in? You may not be able to get it to family members at the last minute. So think. Of about that before you start, you know, bringing all your supplies and equipment for your um, for your commencement. Um, do, do, do. In reference so, to time, as, though, I just wanted to uh, state something. In reference to time, and ref um, from where uh, Miss Palmer was coming from, there are two other events going on at the convention center that day. So please don't press your time and get caught up in the other things going on. Leave ample time to get there, get settled, and be where you need to be. Do not play games with your time. Yep. Just a reminder. Great. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, everyone. We're in the home stretch. I can't wait to see everybody. <laughs> no, Vanessa, we do not have a band. <laughs> Uh, I cannot wait to see everybody for commencement rehearsal and grad finale and actually throughout the week. I'm sure I'll see I've seen a, a number of you the last two weeks picking up these tickets. Um, so, yeah, just breathe easy. Your finals are done. Wait for those clearance letters and let's get ready to do some celebrating next week. Congratulations. Yes, you can bring your pro cameras mm -hmm, as long as it's not disruptive to the ceremony. But yes, you can. But congratulations, everybody. We're almost there. Have a good evening. This will be posted on the graduating class website, and I hope to see you all soon. Have a good evening. Congratulations again, Firebirds. Congratulations. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. Congratulations, Firebirds. Thank you.